Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCU Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video we are going to be continuing our matchup guide for COT2, where we're going to be discussing the matchup versus Lexi. If you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome, thank you so much for stopping by. Feel free to check out my other Flesh and Blood content as well as my Alpha Clash content. It's going to be a fun month. We're doing trying to do a video pretty much every day, so it's going to be really fun. If you are a long standing supporter, thank you so much, I really appreciate y'all. Feel free to check out the patreon and the discord down below for access to a great community so um lexi is interesting lexi's the best deck in the format right now the issue with lexi and i'm not i don't mean to be too grim here on the start is that you don't have much agency in her uh matchup there's not a whole lot you can do if she draws her power cards if lexi hits three of a kind and arsenal is it early and then has this crazy turn where they have wing shots and they play a rain rangers before mainly or something like that and they just smack you for 25 30 damage like you just you just die um there's times where lexi just draws and you just die it's similar to how chain used to work uh and actually the matchup plays very similarly to how chain played back in the day chain didn't have a ton of on hits right he just had a crap ton of damage lexi has chain like damage that like the starvo uh chain era like chain like damage but with better on hits um like similar damage output but better on hits it's pretty nuts and she can do it from turn one regardless there's some minor things you can do i think that will help you a little bit at least give you a little bit more agency and i'll try to discuss them here and not be too grim or, or crazy but honestly this matchup's a race there's very minute things you can do to make it better but really it's just you hope to god that you draw your gas turn one through three before they find something that they can do and maybe take over the game um, and make the Lexi kind of make a mistake, to be honest, is, is the best way to put it. So let's talk about it. Some of her power cards. So go on fabtcg.com. I won't link every single list, but just go to like the last 10 lists that Lexi's are having. They all have a core of arrows. The arrows that you care the most about are usually the ones that are on the screen right now. Endless arrow, remorseless, and hamstring shot. Endless arrow sucks because they can just keep playing it, playing it, playing it. Unless you have a D-React to block it out, really, you don't want to have to give up two cards sometimes to block this unless you have a bad hand. Remorseless is the one you respect the most. Definitely want to always respect that card. Um, the thing with remorseless that I see, and it's one of the – I have five tips here that I'll talk about when we get into the list portion – is you need to respect Remorseless. There, I've seen times where Katsus take Remorseless when they're only going to deal like 12 damage, um, and that doesn't really do much because if they hit you with, let's say the Remorseless is the last card they, they fire for six because they give it plus one, and they hit you for six, and then you play out five cards or four cards to deal 12 damage to them or 14 damage, that Remorseless now is hit for 10, and they just went even with you without having to even give up a card, and you expended your whole hand. It's just it's it doesn't work that well all the time. Hamstring shots another one that's really interesting. I will say if you look through like all the recent Lexi lists, like I have them pulled up here in front of me as I'm talking, you know most of the time with most lists, the the arrows you see that are core are like Heat Seeker, Falcon Wing, Endless Arrow, uh, Searing Shot is really a big one uh drill shots usually pretty common at a two or a three of that's like the core of the red arrows for lexi a searing shot um heat seeker uh falcon wing endless arrow and drill shot where you see kind of differences is some will run three infecting shots some will run two some will run three remorseless some will run two some will run one like even yuki lee bender i don't think she ran any like yeah she runs no remorseless um then you have people that run one to two hamstring shots. Some people run three. It really depends on what they think they have to combat. So you might get a little lucky. You might run into Alexia that doesn't run some of these, like remorseless and hamstring shot, which actually makes your day easier. But these are the, if they are running it, you got to respect them and just be on the lookout for them. We'll talk more about that when we get into the tips portion. Then you have the other cards that are not arrow cards. Codex of Frailty is a card. It's ridiculous. Um, not much to say about that. The card's insane. Very difficult to play around. Uh, some people would say you can play around it. I think even if you play around it at the best you possibly can, as a Katsu, it turns off your Kadachis, and it gives them another arrow and potentially makes you discard a card. Um, 
Arctic Incarceration really sucks. If they flip that and give you a Frostbite, they literally can just keep it in their other arsenal slot and threaten you. And, and the first time that you say no blocks, no blocks, they're just going to throw it and start your whole turn. If you block a little bit, they'll probably keep it in their arsenal. And it's really just like a looming doom type of freaking card, no pun intended. Uh, and the card's really good. And then you have three of a kind, which A, gives them access to an insane power turn, but B, it allows them to block a little bit, actually, and block you with two cards, play all three of a kind, replenish their whole hand. It's just pretty nuts. So these are the other cards you have to keep an eye out for. Normally, I would give a hand example here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up two lists, and let me take this down, pro uh, YouTuber here. Um, there's two lists here that I think work really well for different reasons against Lexi. And I'll kind of talk about some power cards. So you have Tyler Broughton's 18th place calling Katsu deck where he went 10-3, played against Mal Lexi's. If you go to Card Advantage's channel, which I'll try to remember to link down in the description below, he has even a gameplay against Lexi where he wins two out of three of the games. Kind of goes through his decision making. But Tyler's probably one of the most intelligent Katsu players in the world. So a lot of practice, a lot of thought between how he plays. Then you have the Team Polish list, which was like two, three months ago. They did an interview with uh, Finno Black uh, on their on their list. And I think, honestly, their list is a little bit more suited for Lexi. We'll talk about them second. Um, before we get into the list specifically, I have a couple uh, tips I think you, you can have. These tips seem really like no like really obvious but that's how this 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 matchup does not play there's not a bunch of intricacies with this matchup there's just key things you have to think about in my opinion one is look to push early with lexi you need to find your power cards quick um and you need to push right you need to make the most efficient long lines you possibly can i know that sounds like really normal with katsu but it's especially normal when it comes to um against Lexi. The second thing is go second if you can. It sucks for them to get a six card hand, but you want to be put them on the back foot before they put you on the back foot. So going second is ideal in my opinion, even though you, they, they do get an arsenal out of it. Um, going first, if you do go first, you need to look to push damage quickly. Um, if you notice, if you go watch Tyler Broughton's game, he has a blue, a surging strike, a snatch, and a bonds in hand. He literally Kadachi's play surging strike, then play snatch because he's forcing his opponent to say, okay, I got to block with the cards because if you don't, then they're just going to activate Voltaire on your turn, put a card in and get a six card hand anyway. That's why going seconds better because unless you can push a crap ton of damage, most of the time they're getting a six card hand no matter what. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. Uh, as you are five or six card hand to pay if it's first second no matter what so go second if you can uh it makes a big deal in the matchup if you go first push damage uh the fourth out of fifth one is respect remorseless i've seen so many katsus where like their hand is 12 damage at best and that's if they play it correctly maybe 14 damage and they're getting faced with a six power remorseless and that's if the lexi doesn't block at all uh and they just take it and then they take four to five more damage on their turn, and the Lexi's like, okay, I'm just going to let you do what you want. I've even seen worse cases where they're only going to deal 10 to 12 damage, and they take that remorseless. Like, you're at best trading damage um, where you could just cover it up, deal eight or so damage, and then you came slightly out as far as value cycle. So you got to respect remorseless. Um, especially when your hand is suboptimal and sometimes costumes just won't do that and that's a big issue. And then my last my last suggestion, and it's more on what the Polish list is doing. I haven't watched their full interview, so I'd love I need to go back and see what they said. But from a person who plays Katsu a lot, there's two things that the Polish list does that I think is really cool. One, they use even bigger than that. I normally don't run this card, but I did run it back in the chain time frame, and I think this matchup plays similar to how chain played, where you just kind of got to race them down and hope to God your damage can match theirs and get them in a state where they have to block more. Because really, this, this game is about forcing the other person at lethal. Whoever forces lethal first kind of wins. Um, back at, when it was the chain Starvo era, I was using I was playing Katsu in the PQ uh, ProQuest season, ended up placing top eight, and this card was like the main reason I was able to race chain, at least like somewhat race chain like and, and do well because when you combine this card with cards like enlightened strike and snatch you're able to present more relevant on hit so katsu's lack of katsu's issue when it comes to 
Lexi is unless it's the Bonds line and you're going to dishonor her, she's just saying, okay, I'm just going to race you. I don't care about your on hits. I don't care if you tutor. I'm still dealing better damage than you because, again, her average turn, let's say she flips a Heat Seeker in Arsenal. She loads in a Bolton shot, gives it plus one, go again, loads in a Searing shot, gives it go again, fires the Heat Seeker, right? That's a That's – a 14 damage turn with a plus one on hit and an on hit of an extra arsenal slot. So two on hits, right? That's better than every turn you're going to do other than a big bonds turn. It really is. It's better. There is like, even in this deck, there is not a significant line you can do, or there's very few lines you can do that are better than that. And that's a normal Lexi turn. So because of that, you have to give Lexi more of a thought of, on hits that matter. So being able to give Snatch Go again with even bigger than that, being able to do Enlightened Strike Draw a card uh, and with Go because that's Go again from even bigger than that and be able to have more draw power, more damage power, and be able to race her is really important. The second thing they did here, and I don't know if they did this on purpose or not, but they have a lot of breakpoint attacks. I did this similarly in my old list when I was in the chain era, was like I'd play a Torrent Tempo a lot in Soul Beat Strike because in those aggro matchups, Lexi's not going to want to block that. So having these these breakpoint attacks that really can force... Lexi's going to have to make a decision of, do I want to block with two cards, right? Um, even Surging Strike comes in at four. Surging Strike Red comes in at five. Whelming Gust Wave Red comes in at four, obviously. Um, you know, Enlightened Strike comes in at five. They even added Fluster Fist in a snaps list because it, it hits that breakpoint and it blocks three. So... Definitely something to think about. Um, I think both of those are really good. Use breakpoint attacks and use even bigger than that. If you want to use Tyler Broughton's tile list, you have to be a little bit more concerted and pick your spots. Tyler's looking when he has the gas, he has the gas, but he also is able to block when he wants to. But it's a very similar list. Even he runs one yellow even bigger than that to help maybe sure up the Lexi matchup a little bit and go a little bit faster. So that's the, that's the basis of it. Nothing too crazy. I'll try to link everything down below. I think I guess the best tips are use breakpoint attacks against her. Uh, use even bigger than that maybe as a tech card for her. Um, really respect remorseless as much as you can, especially when you don't have a deck that or a hand that can match, you know, the extra damage you're going to receive from playing cards out. Um, go second in the matchup if you can. If you go first, try to push as much damage as humanly possible, uh, and then also again look to push your power cards early. This deck is this matchup is about who can force lethal first. Whoever forces lethal first wins most of the time. Um, you do block slightly better than her. So when you get down to those low life totals and you're both forcing lethal and like having a trade, that's where, unless they run to a three of a kind, that's where you really shine. Um, so the matchup's definitely winnable. It's not favored. It's definitely not favored. I don't think it's severely unfavored, but it's probably like 40 60 if I had to give a random uh, metric. Um, but yeah, hopefully this helps a little bit. Uh, maybe at least in deck construction, it helps you a little bit to like get some things to think about, um, some interactions to think about. Let me know in the comments below how maybe you've helped yourself out in the Lexi matchup. Uh, I've kind of like chalked it at this point, so I haven't like deep dove the the matchup like other people have. So some people might have some good comments down below. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If not me, it's totally fine. Go to our Flush Bug Creator. Leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. And I'll see you all next time on TCU Talk. Thank you all so much.